talk about business. I uh, like to think of myself as a girl boss. I've done pretty much everything by myself and it's not because I, I don't want to delegate anything to anyone else. It's just how it's been so far. It's definitely been challenging at times and um, the, the, the good thing that I can take out of doing nearly everything down to like <laughs> designing the products and then photographing them myself and editing them myself and filming my videos is that it, it made it very hands-on for me. So I've, I've honed a lot of skills um, that I would normally have to outsource to, to a lot of other people. Having said that, it does take up a lot of my time and that is partly um, due to why I stepped away from YouTube is that I just couldn't keep up with um, the weekly video and all the, the people that were contacting me for collaborations um, without it getting completely overwhelming. So it's really lovely for me to now be doing this podcast and to delegate or be at the point in my career where I'm able to do that to someone else. Okay, so the two business things I wanna speak about today which are in relation to delegating tasks to other people is streamlining what you do. A lot of people ask me how I take my photos and yeah, I've got a fancy like uh, Sony AX7 that I use um, that we're recording with right now. But recently I found that I, I have stepped away from using the professional camera just due to time restraints, not because of the quality or anything like that. The quality is fantastic. But I do need to speak to you about my phone, which is a Huawei. And the one feature that I want to talk about is the nighttime mode. And a lot of you ask how I get the awesome photographs of my ambient room with all the LED lighting that I post on Instagram. I love my LED lighting, I really do. But it's the night vision camera. I'm gonna tell you my secrets and hopefully Huawei might hear this and endorse me and you know, I will consider your offer. <laughs> um, but they've got a night mode on here. And what it does is it takes multiple exposures. So you have to hold the camera still for about five seconds and it takes several shots and then compiles or composites them together. And you just, it fucking pops, it, it, it makes the color pop you get this insane clarity it's really quite fantastic and the reason that i am still using this phone is because of that feature so back to the business advice you can do so much on your phone these days i cannot recommend this enough this is the huawei p30 pro or the p30 plus whichever is the extra one i'm really excited about the p50 that's just about to come out um i'm still trying to figure out if it has that night mode and the multiple exposures. If it doesn't, I won't be upgrading because I love this so fucking much, you have no idea. But if you are an influencer or a business starting out, a lot of what I do now is just using this phone and having the product, you know, make a good product, get a good phone, they're not like unachievably expensive. You know, you can get one on a contract or if you have the money, buy it outright. But the quality is fucking insane. So one hack is to minimize your technology. <laughs> I say this with all this shit around me, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but really simplify it. There's a need and a time for um, lots of gadgets. But if you're launching a business and money is an issue, as it is for most people starting a new business, the launch or the birth of a new business is, is not a time to invest in um, you know, a $4,000 camera. So hack one, get yourself a good phone, design or sell a good product and photograph it well. The pairing of those two things will help you get a customer base, which brings me onto my next topic, which is using a pre-order system. It makes so much sense. And I don't know why more people don't do it. <laughs> but having said that, I'm seeing now a lot of people, and I'm getting really excited talking about it, on Instagram, a lot of women, a lot of strong women that I follow and admire myself starting to use the pre-order system. And I have to wonder, if that might have come from, from them seeing me do it, which is fucking fabulous. I hope that is the case. It's really lovely to see women and men embracing their own creativity and ideas and starting a business on whatever scale. Pre-ordering whatever you're selling is definitely a way to allow you to launch your business without needing an investor or a ridiculous shitload amount of money. <laughs> so back to this compact mirror, this was the first product, or well, the second, I should say, yeah, second. The first was the Frankenstein. This was the second one where I didn't need to pre-order it. So they still, they cost me two grand to get made, but I had that there, thankfully. And we just launched it, Christiana and I, straight away. And they were selling and it was great. We recouped our money and it all went to plan. Now, that worked successfully um, for two reasons. The first being that my business is somewhat established. You know, I'm not fresh out of the, the gate, so to speak. I've been around for a few years, so I have a customer base. And the second is, it's a fucking, okay, it's three reasons. It's a fucking kick-ass product. <laughs> it's unique. It hadn't been done before. 
Uh, okay, four. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> there was a market for it. Like, it was useful. It's a useful product. And four is that I collaborated with someone that I deeply admire, Christiana, a beautiful woman. And we came up with something together. And we collaborated not only artistically and energetically to birth this new product into the world, but we combined our customer bases and our our social media presence, I guess, to further help the spread of this wonderful product. So if you're able to do that, that's going to significantly help you. So try to do that as much as you can. Obviously, people will only this is a bit of a, a left of field uh, kind of tip, but people will only want to work with you if your work is of a certain quality and you're a decent person. So a general rule for being a businesswoman or a businessman is don't be a dick. Um, treat others how you would treat yourself and all should go fairly well. <laughs> now with pre-orders, okay, I didn't pre-order this, but normally everything else, say the Black Friday ones, cause they're, uh, they're very fucking expensive. Um, I had to pre-order. And this is a fabulous way to launch a new product without, again, like I said, needing to have that money there that you will need for your children um, if you have children or just bills that you're paying. So the pre-order system basically means that you find a manufacturer for whatever the product is, you get a quote to have it made, you get a sample made. <laughs> Oh God, there's so many stories I can tell you about manufacturing. And when I start to share them with you, you will be like, this woman is a fucking saint. How is she still doing it? There's been so many disheartening experiences, but part of my expansion of consciousness and kind of going with the flow, like the Buddhist saying, be like water has definitely helped. And I've implemented that program, that reaction into how I react when shit doesn't go how it's supposed to, you know, when they send me something that's supposed to be purple and I've got like 400 of them that are red. I'm like, this is not right. <laughs> You get a sample made, once everything is okay, you get a quote for say 100 or 200 or 300. Try to find a manufacturer that does low minimum order quantities. You don't wanna be stuck with a manufacturer where their minimum is a thousand. That's going to be too much for you to sell. And you don't want that pressure. You wanna alleviate any pressure that you might have so you can focus on the creativity and idea that you're trying to put out to the world without this unnecessary stress of the business world pulling you down. So get the sample made, get the quote, and then from that quote, you figure out how many you would need to sell to recoup the cost of the manufacturing. So for example, this mirror, I would get a quote, if it's $2,000, I might need to sell 50 or 75 of them, which is normally a figure that I've worked with, to raise the money that I could then give all of that, those 50 or 75 sales, every penny from those orders goes to the manufacturing of the product. Therefore, I haven't put money or taken money out of my own pocket, so to speak. If you are a parent, you know how imperative it is to not take every single penny you earn and put it into your own business. Like you need to be able to buy shoes for your children and, and pay for food and just normal bills. So this is a really smart way to give yourself that opportunity to start a business without again, needing that funding there. Now, this will work if you're doing quality products. So before you find a manufacturer and you get samples made, which are incredibly expensive, make sure you've got something that's decent. You know, I'm, I'm lucky in that sense because I, I like Photoshop is an extension of my body. I trained myself with that um, from 16. I did web design and taught myself HTML and JavaScript. So there's a lot of like coding and design kind of uh, skills that I have that I'm very aware most people don't have. And I'm like this little self-contained um, designer unit. It's worked out quite well for me, but I realized that that is not normal. So you might need to um, sketch a rough idea out and then you know find someone that is able to complete that for you and make a pattern so then you can have it made. Again, I'm lucky that I can do that myself. It's actually the, the hardest part. I wish I could delegate that to someone else because I enjoy the creating of the product and the sketching it out. And I hate making the pattern because it's the boring part, it's the specs. Just give me the sample. I wanna see how wonderful it is and I wanna launch it. I don't wanna sit there. And that's where I am now, bit of a tangent, but with the Danny Divine, we've got the most <laughs> amazing bag. That's gonna blow your mind. But you think I can fucking just sit down and finish putting it out to the universe now, so I have to. I need to finish the pattern so the manufacturer can make the sample so I can release it. So that is still happening. It's just me getting to like 100%. And that's something that I wanna speak about is doing shit to completion. 
Man, I watched a Teal Swan video just the other day and she's, it was, I think it was called How to Be Productive. And she spoke about writing a list and I'm like, I've got the list and write the, the, the importance and what's the most important and what's not. I've done that, good, we got, got all that. And then she's like, choose one and do it to completion. I'm like, oh fuck. Okay, I don't do that. I do, I focus my energy on little bits of this and that and this and that, never finishing anything. And I've become in that sense, quite unproductive. I'm aware of that. And over the last two weeks, I've consciously said, I need to change this. That video really resonated with me. Here we are today, you know, with one of my songs in pre-production, the arrangement is done. It's been sent to the producer. He's now working on it. Bang, that was on my list. The second thing is this podcast. Here we are today, sitting down, doing it to completion. And it feels fucking terrific. And it actually wasn't as hard as I thought, <laughs> which is the funny thing. I had in my head that it was gonna be this huge, like, oh my God, it's gonna take so long. I've got so many things. No, you just need to turn your phone on silent and not be distracted by social media and people constantly, constantly contacting me. That drives me fucking nuts. Just separate and really focus on what is important to you and do it through to completion. Kind of went on a bit of a tangent there, but back to pre-ordering. If you don't have a genuinely unique product, it, the pre-order system will probably fail. At least the worst thing that can happen is you've spent your time, you've invested your time in it. You would have invested a few hundred dollars in a sample. And then if you don't get enough pre-orders, you just call it off and refund everyone. I've been lucky enough in my career of, of doing pre-orders over the last, uh, like four years where I haven't had to cancel any, which is lovely. They have um, varied in regards to how long it's taken to, to hit the mark, like of getting the 75 sales or the 50 sales that we've needed. And then there's the wait time for the manufacturing. So you need to be very transparent with your customer base with how long it's going to take. Yeah, transparency is another good business tip. Uh, just let people know what's what's going on. Honesty is always the best policy. When shit fucks up, <laughs> just, just let them know. The worst thing that can happen is that someone will ask for a refund, but as long as you're, again, honest with what's happened and you communicate with the customer, it can usually be resolved in an amicable way. Okay, so, oh, I forgot to vape, hang on. So I was recently told that my Australian accent is erotic. <laughs> I think it's a good time to do some, some ASMR, so I'm gonna stand up here. Isn't this belt cute? We can do a little section on um, what I'm wearing. So this belt is from Dolls Kill. So is this top, it's by Widow. The little um, collar pins, which are just fucking adorable, are by Manku Gil, a good friend of mine. She's got her own shop. Uh, I think it's just called the Manku Gil shop. I will list it below, but she custom made these for me and they're fucking adorable. Yeah, really happy with how that looks. And oh my God, can we just talk about the length of my hair for a second? <sighs> okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm super aware. That, um, that my Australian accent is uh, sexy as fuck. And um, let me know if you, you want me to do some like ASMR, could read like some poetry or philosophy or something like that. And yeah. Mm. <sighs> yeah, all right. That was fun. I think I'd really enjoy doing ASMR actually. I don't have hate mail. But it's funny as fuck um, when people read out that shit and try not to laugh. I, I laugh a lot. Um, we're going to speak about laughs in a second. But for now, let's talk about love. So love. Are you in love? Have you ever been in love? Can you fall in love in 48 hours? That's what I want to talk about today. I recently, uh, well, not too recently. It was a few months ago now, but found myself completely <laughs> infatuated with a, a wonderful British man and can I just say, I love a man with a fucking accent. <laughs> he literally had me at hello, cause it was like, hello. I'm <laughs> like, oh my God, James Bond. He was sexy as fuck. He was charismatic, he was fit. He was intelligent, he was spiritual. A lot of the qualities that I now look for in a man. We, we spoke constantly for two hours on the phone. It was, he was in Melbourne. Yes, yeah, an interstate impossible love during the, um, the, the, yeah, the lockdowns. There was no way to really see each other. I mean, it was, it was I'm not, I wasn't really looking for an interstate romantic escapade anyway. So it was in retrospect, it was like, it was doomed to fail and it was completely lust and not love. But in the moment, gosh, the emotions felt so close to love. Um, I know now it was infatuation, but yeah. Have you ever fallen in love in 48 hours? Have you experienced love at first sight? Um, 
that beautiful sensation of the lingering eye contact that just lingers a little too long <laughs> it's a it's it's a beautiful thing and I truly think that that is only able to happen if you are in touch with who you are which is why again I'm going to be speaking so much about sexual energy and creative energy and I've really come in touch with that myself I think I've had what is what I now know as a kundalini awakening I'm really in touch with my own sexuality <laughs> and you know that's that's not a dirty thing uh, I think our society definitely you know shuns that where it's it's so necessary it's a integral part of who we are yeah the whole idea of being able to open up to someone so immediately just through eye gazing eye gazing is i need to dedicate a whole fucking podcast to that but like there's looking at someone and then there's looking and they're totally different to do a little fucking experiment on this so i can look at you rather normally just saying if you experience any tingles that's fine <laughs> i can really start to look at you and it's supposed to unveil the true self to people but they, they did this beautiful eye experiment where people just looked at each other for at least a minute and it was people like um fathers and daughters or two lovers or um mother and a child and just at first they were kind of giddy and laughing and they were just connecting with each other so don't look away from me now just look at the camera and what happened is after a while the joking or let's say the mask fell away and they met each other almost for the first time with their true self and normally you're hit with extreme emotion um, and it's just beautiful to watch so between the, the father and the daughter they were, they just they saw each other for the first time it was beautiful they started crying they just had to keep staring at each other and they just were met with unconditional love that was really touching and i've experienced that a few times yeah in the last year and a half where i've been so taken with just someone's presence within their gaze being open to that it's really beautiful when that's reciprocated and it becomes a cycle it doesn't always have to be sexual obviously father and son is not sexual but there's that openness um and it made me very aware that like we we interact on a, a quite um a shallow level and i'm really into connecting with people in a very present way and i really hope that when you watch this that you enjoy this period where i'm i'm talking to you you know whoever wherever you are right now you're feeling how i felt when I'm filming this to you and that's a beautiful thing so if you haven't done that whoever whoever you'd like to do that with do that experiment for a minute just stare at each other and see see what happens and normally the other person will look away um but yeah if you're if you're both aware that something beautiful and magical will happen when you when you stay and if you're doing it with a lover it's obviously um it's 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 beautiful um and everyone should experience that if you've never experienced it I fucking completely encourage you to do it right now. Pause the podcast. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> Thank me later. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to play your little song literally called Can You Fall In Love In 48 Hours? Um, that, yeah, I wrote from that experience with this beautiful man. I hope you like it. Let's go play it. Can you fall?
So the next thing I want to talk about is one's true love. And if that concept of a true love resonates with you, I, I didn't laugh a lot for like just a short period of time, like two decades. <laughs> And I'm now kind of realizing how much you laugh is an indicator of how happy you are. <laughs> Let me say that again. How much you laugh is indicative to how happy or not happy you are. If you don't laugh a lot, I think it's time to reevaluate your entire fucking life. I have this friend, Natalie, I hope you're watching. Every time I call her, a really good friend, and I just know that like, I'm going to laugh as soon as I just hear her go, hello. <laughs> I'm just instantly, that's my true love. I just, I love, I love her voice and her fucking energy. There's no other way to, to summarize that. It's her energy. She's beautiful. I've known her for a long time, like 15 years now, um, or maybe 10, doesn't matter. But her laugh got me. It's just, I, I was always saying to her, fuck, your laugh is addictive. It's just so raw and authentic and charismatic. And now I'm saying that about mine. I'm like, yeah, it's contagious. It's, it's me in a fucking nutshell. My laugh embodies like everything that I am. And yes, I'm aware it's, it's similar to Julia Roberts laugh, who I've always fucking loved. You know, it's just, yeah, you, you, you hear a laugh and it just makes you smile and makes your day. And yeah, my friend Natalie, why I mentioned that is because I never had that, I guess, and I really noticed that in her. Yeah, when, when I went through big life changes and I, I, I separated and um, initiated the separation from my husband and fell in love and, uh, you know, started writing music again and found spirituality and God and all these different things. I found my power. I started laughing a lot. And, that, and then it's magical now when we, we talk, like we've just got these insane like laughs together. So do you laugh? If not, it's, yeah, you have to, you should be around people that make you laugh. It's so obvious now that I, in retrospect, I can see the difference, but I guess it wasn't as, as obvious. Yeah, but going through life without laughing is, is, it's also like going through life without love. So, fuck, who wants that? No one. I have a pretty black sense of humor, but there is a video I'm going to post <laughs> down below. If you need some help laughing, there is a New Zealand deck video that fucking has never made me crack up more than anything else that I've watched. <laughs> it never ceases to be fucking hilarious. You know, obviously the duck in the New Zealand accent. Oh, you know, they've had a lot of kids on my duck and they've all had a good time. <laughs> Watch the video. It's, it's funny. But um, God, that just if you need a little bit of help with laughing, watch that video and yeah. If you don't like it, that's fine. You just obviously don't have a very good sense of humor. I'm joking. It's just, it's funny as fuck. Please watch it. So we are at the end of today's podcast. I am trying to wrap this up as casually as possible. Let me know um, down below if there's anything that you'd like me to cover. Obviously the content within this podcast is quite varied and I want it to be interesting and have a nice flow to it and be broken up with little snippets of music and things like that. But I also would maybe like to include a question and answer section. So if you have anything you'd like to ask me, um, you know, write it in the comment below and then maybe I will look at that as I'm filming episode two and um, we'll go through and add in some questions. I've really enjoyed sitting down and connecting with you in this manner. Um, I hope you're enjoying the content. I hope you're enjoying the visual aspect of it. I'm sure it will be elevated a lot more compared to a lot of the other content that's been on my channels. I can't wait to start preparing episode two for you. And we will end today's video on another song of mine that I've written on guitar called Killing Time. It's not quite finished, but I'm just loving where it's at and I'm going to play it for you now and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Be safe.
Please like, share, and consider subscribing to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. very um it's really hard to separate that's my doorbell Dun, do, do, do. fuck that fucking doorbell good luck editing this together <laughs> oh that was so sick bro